Welcome to the Home Coach Podcast, a weekly deep dive into all things real estate. Now, here's your host, Steve Henyon. Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of Home Coach. We're keeping focused on the current market that's ahead of us. We're driving our business. Everything seems to be still going fast paced, especially on the listing side. Buyers are still struggling to get that purchase under the belt because we're at a slow part of the inventory. But you're going to hear me repeat once again in this quick week version is pay attention to the economy. There are things that I see that are reminiscent of the 2000. Seven into 2008, where we started to see things on the horizon that just didn't seem to make sense. What I mean by that is I want us to take a look at all the uh, economic conditions that are happening, not just here in the United States, but around the world. And I want to start with China. Uh, Well, actually, before I get into China, let's just refresh the fact that here in America, we have our oil is at $86 a barrel and climbing. That's not healthy for us uh, as gas prices are getting back up to $4 a barrel. Gas right now, like I said, is at three thirty-six dollars a gallon and climbing on that. China. So let me just, as I start off with the gas prices, which of course energy prices are going to mean less money in the pockets of buyers out there, and it's going to uh, impact consumer um, confidence. It's going to impact um, consumer uh, interest in purchasing stuff. I think there's going to be some kind of a clamping down, especially when we see 100 ship containers off the coast of California that aren't getting unloaded. Something like that, what is it, 200,000 containers aren't uh, or stocked, piled either at sea or on the docks out there in California, uh, and whether we're going to get Christmas presents. But let's go back to China. China. So China's GDP third quarter numbers came out and it's at 4.9%. That's down from 7.9% in Q2. Now, why are, we, why are we caring about China? Steve, why do we care about China? We're selling houses here in the in, uh, United States. Well, China's the second largest, as you know. I mean, second largest economy only to us in the world. Uh, produce, most of those containers that are sitting on the ships are going to be from China. They're not going to be from the United States. If you're, if you're making product in the United States, they're not sitting out at sea right now on it. And uh, we can look at that for their monetary policy and what's happening over there and even foreshadowing what might be happening or could happen over here. It's just something we need to pay attention to because what they're experiencing now are because of their economy uh, is – slowing and we're looking at stagflation out there as well as you know china's looking at stagflation as well as we're looking at stagflation i just uh posted something up there on our facebook at home coach school on facebook about stagflation which is when the economy is hit with slow growth high inflation and unemployment well china's now having rolling power outages uh, there. So they're not with the, those rolling power outages means they're not able to produce at the same rate as if they had full power, right? I mean, businesses can't go and build or make things uh, or even be able to build houses, which gets us to one of the other points is that uh, with the shipping delays, they're having shipping and uh, uh, supply chain disruptions, just like we are. So you couple that with the power outages. And then you add in that they have a property crisis out there, very similar to what we're experiencing, where they're not able to build uh, um, the housing or commercial at the same level that they used to, just like us. Now, why is that happening? Well, like let's okay, so let's take that from China. That's just the snapshot of what's happening over in China. Having problems with property, you got power outages. You got supply chain shipping issues that are out there, a drop in their uh, uh, third quarter growth. Worried about stagflation. Let's go back to the United States. I said oil is at $86 a barrel, gas price at $336 and rising on that. Um, the housing starts in the United States is down 
7.7% in September. The numbers in September are 7.7% lower than from August. So our housing starts um, are down. And, uh, um, and we have uh, also an interesting announcement from Zillow, how Zillow is getting out of the iBuyer. Well, they didn't, I don't think they actually said that they're getting out of the iBuyer program programming of it, that sector, but they are stopping their iBuyer program now, meaning they're not purchasing any more homes. They have uh, an excess of inventory that they can't ri get rid of. Now they're blaming that on all the conditions we just talked about. Uh, the unemployment, they can't find uh, folks to work to repair the homes that they bought to get them up to the shape that they want to go and flip them uh, for. The margins aren't there. They have a high, high inventory and a low uh, time frame that they're holding on to. Uh, so they're kind of clamping down and saying, well, we're not going to do any more on that. Now, this is interesting that you have the leader in the iBuyer program say that. Now, I've, we've talked before that uh, iBuyers represent at the, at the max iBuyers, all the industry iBuyers represent will max out the, the goal for iBuyers is 10% of the market share. Okay. They currently at good, at good uh, in areas like uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, two, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, their, their shares, um, uh, Austin, Texas, they, they comprise about 3% of the total housing pie, which is fine. I mean, there should be no angst about competing about the iBuyer program out there. Uh, as far as you're concerned and getting a piece of your pie uh, on there. But what's interesting is that Zillow has made a conscious decision to stop. Now, I want to take that into consider with Open Door. Open Door went the opposite approach. Open Door is going full throttle now. There are no questions asked, paying list pricing. They're going in, taking in a house that's on the market and just saying, fine, we're going to buy it from you. Zillow said, we ain't going to compete with that. So Open Door came at Zillow and said, you know what, we're going to, we're going to put the metal to, to the floor on this, and we're going to try and push Zillow out of this game or at least make crimp their style. And Zillow backed off. Bill said, okay, we're, we're out. We got too much stuff on our hands. Interesting play by Open Door on this, because if you look at the balance sheets of these, home, uh, these companies, they're in the negative. They're not making necessarily, they have positive income, but they're not making net, net profit anywhere near what they, they, they thought that they would be or needed to be, which means that these companies are highly leveraged. Now, that's a problem if this market goes south. If this market goes a little bit south, this is what I've said over the last couple of years, that these there are no margins in Zillow and Open Door and these big iBuyer programs for that to happen. And I think Zillow, this is just my impression of what's happening is Zillow recognized this and said, I got, we got to pull the plug. Open doors done the opposite and said, you know what? I think they're hedging that the market isn't going to do this and they're going full throttle and trying to buy up all these other homes that they're able to get into. Now, keep in mind all this data that's going on because we too have a in the country, right? In our country, like China, we're having the shipping delays. We haven't had the power outages, thank thank goodness. But we're, we're having issues of being able to build. So we don't have the inventory coming into the build, which means if we can't build houses, those are jobs that are going to be lost or at least temporarily put onto the sideline. Where are they going to get that income to make their money? We've talked about this. How are these people surviving without making money? I, we, I don't, I, I can't figure it out. And if, if the houses aren't being built, that means the developers aren't making money. The road crews that are out there aren't going to be making money. The jobs, the, it, it's important to recognize the housing industry in the United States represents 18% of the GDP, 18% of our economy. We are not experiencing a housing problem like we had in 2008 through 10. 
2008 and 10, that was our industry's fault, along us, along with the banking, along with the appraisal, along with even the consumer um, out there. It was all of our faults when it came to the housing. And when those house of cards and all the lies and stacks and everything uh, um, out there and the financing, uh, creative financing that was being done, you all have seen the move, the big short. Uh, we created that meaning our, the housing and the bubble and all like that, that created that great recession that we had. We're not creating what's happening here today. But we are going to feel the impact if something doesn't change because the current trajectory right now is there's no stopping oil price, prices from going up. I don't see any, which means that gas prices are going to go up. So our uh, fuel costs, our um, power costs, are going to go up, which just means that, which which is breeding to inflation. Inflation is just merely a greater tax on you and me. Just more money coming out of our pocket with inflation and not getting anything for it. So if we have less dollars in our pocket, but then prices are going up because we don't have the inventory on it, we're going to start separating into a class, different type of classes that are gonna happen within us. We already know that we have in many cities uh, across the country, we've got a housing crisis for lower income, meaning the people who are going to work in the restaurants and the Lowe's and the, the Home Depots and all, it, where are those people gonna come from? Now, like, look, Steve, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out how I'm gonna uh, get my next uh, listing uh, on the market in the MLS, I don't have time for this, I get it. You don't have time for today, but you will need this information and to figure out a plan come tomorrow. I don't know if, if this, if we don't stop this trajectory, we're going to experiencing housing issues, meaning selling, renting, affordability in the near future. And we just need to plan it. It's just prudent to be able to plan what if. What if this goes south? How am I prepared for it? Have I paid off? Do I have no debt? Do I have as close as I can to having no debt? Am I less leveraged uh, as an individual or as a family uh, than, than everybody else? Do get, pay off all these kinds of things. I think it's the preparation part that you need to uh, do today, which is what you know, we in North Carolina, which I can only speak of, we lost 40% of the agents during that, that, that crash of 2008, 80% of the mortgage brokers out of, out of business, nothing. And, and of the ones that survived, it wasn't that everyone was tonning it and making money. Everyone was trying to scramble to find the dollars. I'm not, I'm not a doomsdayer out here. All I'm saying is that I think you all need to prepare for the worst. And if the worst doesn't come, then it's a benefit, right? Then we're, it's, a, it's a big benefit uh, for us. Don't get caught in the house of cards like 2008, today in 2021, 22. Um, and hopefully uh, the powers to be will uh, correct the ship in time before we have another great recession. That's it for this week, guys. Thanks for uh, tuning in.